Well, after spending one evening in a building that closely resembles a garden shed, and considering the amount of rainfall last night, I was slightly apprehensive about what the day would bring. However, this is not just any garden shed, it's a shed with views like this. As a photographer we dream about moments like these, moments with mood and atmosphere that make beautiful photos. As I emerged the next morning, I was slightly apprehensive about the amount of rainfall over the last 24 hours. Today, I would have to travel back down the river. And I was slightly unsure of how high its water levels would be. Over the last 12 months I have been really lucky to have been able to prepare my vehicle for this trip. And what a trip it's been. It's been the proving ground for the capability of my vehicle to move me and it through these environments. But it's also been the proving ground for my confidence to do so. Sometimes it's not the photo that changes a photographer, it is the journey to get there and the legacy that is left behind. One thing I learnt about the landscape in New Zealand when I came here eight years ago is how diverse it is. It has beautiful savannah-like landscapes like this. And I couldn't resist taking a photo with my Fujifilm GFX 50S2. And this is me, Stephen Milner, and here I am explaining how much atmosphere this scene has. But unfortunately my GoPro didn't record any audio today which is why I'm narrating at the start of this video. However, I do hope you enjoy this photo. As I approach the point where the river meets the lake edge, I took the opportunity to put my drone up in the air and study this area. To take a closer look at some of the different shapes, tones and textures created by the interaction of the glacial river with the surrounding lake edge. And it truly was beautiful. That evening I found myself a very beautiful camp location. A camp location with a view like this. And I couldn't resist taking the opportunity to photograph this lake because of its beautiful blue water and mirror-like reflections. As the evening moved towards the end of the day, the wind increased and our reflections were no more. The next morning I revisited the same location with the hope of capturing a sunrise photo of Mount Cook with some nice reflections. However, the wind had a different idea for me but there were some beautiful colours to photograph. And I was feeling very lucky that I was able to photograph New Zealand's highest peak, Mount Cook, which stands just below 4,000 metres. And the light on its peak this morning was very beautiful, which made for a great black and white photo.
well after having experienced a beautiful sunrise over Mount Cook. I was feeling really excited about what the day would bring. And today is the start of a new adventure. An adventure that takes us deep into the heart of the foothills of New Zealand's tallest mountain to photograph some beautiful glaciers. But first, we must get there. So what an amazing view here. Probably a bit of a classic photo for this area, but we have a road sweeping around the landscape that leads up towards the mountain on the horizon. And the lake today is looking just as blue as it was yesterday. It's absolutely beautiful. Did just take a photo, handheld with the Fujifilm GFX 50S2. And yeah, we're at um, 45 millimeter ISO 160. And the shutter speed was 80th of a second with the polarizer on. And the polarizer is doing a fantastic job of adding um, beautiful contrast in those mountains in the valleys and highlighting how blue that water is. So anyway, I'll put a photo up. I really hope you enjoy this one. So here we are, uh, another magnificent view with a beautiful sweeping roadway that leads right up to the mountain. And again, panoramic with the 45 to 100 millimeter lens on the Fujifilm GFX 50S2, we are at 100 millimeter F16, ISO 160. And I'll put the other settings up with the photo. I really hope you enjoy it. Oh, by the way, we use a polarizer as well. This polarizer is working awesome. Here we have another magnificent view. This has to be one of the most scenic roads in New Zealand that I've ever seen. And we're actually on the road, right in the middle of it. Another panoramic with a road leading right up to the mountain. I'll put a photo up, I really hope you enjoy it. Absolutely spectacular. How beautiful does it look? This has to be the best location that I've found so far that gives us uninterrupted views of the mountain. And it's also got this beautiful orange tussock in the foreground. How beautiful is this? A glacial lake with a glacier off in the distance. Beautiful mountains. I've just taken a couple of photos from this position. One up this way, up into the glacial lake and onto the glacier. And then behind me here, down the valley, you can see the river that runs off the glacier. Two panoramas, one with a 30 millimeter lens, the other one with a zoom lens at 100 millimeters. I'll put the settings up on the photos. Yeah, what else can I say? Just a beautiful place. So the aim for today is for us to walk 
there's a four-wheel drive track that runs along the edge of this cliff and you can go so far and then you have to walk and we're going to walk to the end of that peak in the far distance and then we're going to go up the mountain to about 1,800 meters and that'll give us spectacular views down onto the glacier and from the photos that I've seen and the research that I've done on Google Images fingers crossed the glacier will be a nice sweeping curve that will lead lead us up into some beautiful mountains it's quite a trek and there's a little tricky bit apparently there's a landslide we've got to navigate and yeah should be about four to five hours so let's get our walk on let's let's see if we can get up there and make some more beautiful photos so we started the four-wheel drive trek and it is a rocky little road but I am thankful that we do have part of this section of this adventure that I can actually drive just to save my energy for the hike. Magnificent views, absolutely stunning. Well it looks like we've reached the end of the road, there is a chain that's stopping us going any further. So it looks like we're going on foot from here. So we have reached our first challenge, the end of the road, which is where we are stood right now. And just behind me there, I don't know if you can see that, just behind me, there's been a complete washout of the, of the road that goes all the way up there. And it is a good few hundred meters drop. Now, when I spoke to the Department of Conservation at the Information Center, they told me that just up here, up there, there is a route that you have to go through a bit of bush. Hopefully we can find it because I would like to continue this adventure. We've got magnificent views of the end of the glacier down here. And now every now and again, you can hear it crack. And there are some floating bits of ice in the, in the Tasman Lake there. It's looking beautiful. So it looks like we found the way across that I've been told about. And it actually looks like there's a few different routes here. Um, there's a clear track that goes up through through that vegetation there which should be okay it'll give me lots of things to grip onto and i've got some walking poles so i can use one walking pole in one hand and i can use the other hand to grip things so we're just going to make our way down through here a short way and then up the other side and then we should be good to go well we made it across somebody had left some markers for us and here we found an orange marker right here with a little trail leads up so i'm really happy that we've been able to find this because it means that we can continue although it has added some time to the trip but i did allow for that so hopefully we're okay so it's time to have a drink of water and then make our way up this path well we made it oh, what a detour <laughs> what should have taken us 10 minutes from over there to walk to there ended up taking us just over an hour However, we did make it, so the journey can continue straight up there. Well, this is the first time I've used walking sticks. I bought these a year ago because I knew I would be coming on a trip like this in the very near future. And I've never used these sticks before, but my God, do they make a difference. I just find I can walk so much faster with them and it just takes a little smidgen of pressure off my back and my legs and I just kind of feel like I've got a little bit more energy than I would do normally so yeah what a buy I think they cost me like $20 or something on Amazon never again will I do a hike without them well the road we were just walking on ended back there because obviously some time ago this is washed out and I guess it just goes to show the impact of a, a glacier and an alpine environment on the landscape. We are literally just following this ridge line, heading towards those beautiful mountains. Whew. Well, now we're balancing on boulders, but there are markers in the distance over there to guide us through here, thankfully. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was tougher than I thought it was gonna be. I was expecting 
more of a, an easy walking track like we're on right now, but there was more rock bouldering and bush walking than there was tracking. But what a view. Look at that. Tasman Glacier, absolutely beautiful. And a very pleasing sight, a dock hut right there, which will hopefully have some water because I've been conserving my water and I'm feeling a little bit dehydrated. And this hut here is the backup plan, just in case we need it. So let's go and have a look at this hut, eh? Well, I think this has to be the smallest hut I've ever seen. There are three bunks. It does feel nice and warm here though. It's very tidy, but very small. So the question now we are faced with is, how do we get higher up, up here, up onto this ridge line? so we can get a view of the glacier. Well, there's a track here, so we'll have a drink of water and we'll follow that track and see where it takes us. Well, what a view <laughs> and what a climb to get to this position. I'm actually a lot lower than I wanted to be, but I'm really happy with this location because it's a lot lower down, so hang on, let me just check my elevation here. Just wait for the GPS to come and I'll let you know the elevation in a second. But yeah, we have got uninterrupted views of the glacier and beautiful mountains with snow. So I've arrived reasonably early. It is half seven. Sunset's about half nine. As you can see, the shadow is starting to come into the valley. So I'm going to wait until the shadows, I'm going to wait until it's completely covered in shadows actually. And uh, we will shoot this scene as the sun sets and through into twilight. I haven't yet figured out exactly where I'm going to camp. It looks like I could camp here. I'm going to just point that down. It is a little bit flat but it's quite rocky. And I don't want to, I don't want to burst my air mattress. But just back up there a bit where there are some boulders, there's some quite nice flat areas that are covered in moss. So I think we will camp over there and uh, we will do the photography here, nice and easy. And you can see, you probably can't see it on there, but the hut is just down there. But what a climb to get up here, my God. I was expecting it to be a lot easier, I don't know why. So the climb up here was really dicey from the hut all the way around here. And then we got to this, and then we had to scramble all the way up here, up to here. And uh, there was moments there, I've got to be honest with you, there were moments there that I did not feel safe. Um, yeah, but we got through it, and uh, we've arrived here early so I can rest up. And um, tomorrow when we make our way down, I won't be as tired. So now we'll make camp and uh, we'll monitor the light here. And uh, yeah, let's do some photography very soon. So for tonight's dinner, we're on Radax Nutrition's Indian Chickpea Curry. And it looks bloody lovely. <laughs> so I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do tonight because I've been looking around at the, the places that I could potentially camp. And in terms of my setup for camp, I've got um, the outdoor research, Bivy, and um, I've also got an air mattress, a thermarest, and um, all around this area where all this moss is, there's all these little tiny sharp rocks. And I'm just a little bit worried that they'll pop my air mattress. So I'm contemplating after sunset, making my way down to the hut and staying down there. So I just want to quickly explain why we've come here and the time that we've come here. So at this time of year, the sun is setting pretty much pointing towards that glacier. <clears throat> and as you can see behind me now, the light is kind of piercing up the valley there. So that's why we came up here. And in terms of the composition, I wanted to come up here because of the curve in that glacier, the way it sweeps around that mountain. I just think it, I don't know what it is. I'm just fascinated with organic shapes like that and uh, it just makes such a 
an amazing foreground interest piece, particularly with a panoramic like this. So here we have our composition, the first one. Hopefully there's more, but I'm really happy with this one either way. And uh, we're currently at 80mm, F8 ISO 200, and shutter speed is 56th of a second. We've got to polarise on there just to enhance the shadows, um, get some more contrast in those shadows. We're now into um, the golden hour, um, so I've just taken, well, we'll just take this photo here right now, two second timer. And there it is. So something else just caught my eye. What you'll notice about this glacier is that most of it is covered in rock. But in some areas, like this area right here, you can see some of the ice coming through. And I just found those lines and the contrast between the bits of rock and some of the ice that you can see really pleasing. And there's just a bit of a uniform shape to it. So I've kind of zoomed right in a hundred millimeter, focusing on those rocks and we're going to flick it into um, pixel shift mode so we'll be able to create an abstract type photo and uh, it takes 16 images and we can combine them together to make a 200 megapixel photo You know, one of the best things about being in an elevated position like this, which protrudes out past the surrounding landscapes, it gives us 180 degrees views. So I've got the benefit of shooting kind of away from the sun, and I've also got the benefit of shooting towards the sun. And right now there is some amazing light on these mountains here. And I really like this um, glacier, Tasman Glacier Lake here. And these clouds here look like they will potentially catch some colour. So we have just got the last glow on the highest peak over there. And we've got some lovely yellow coming through now. And uh, so we're going to grab this photo right now. This is the last of the light on the mountain. Focusing on the mountain itself. And there we go. It's beautiful. I will do this as a pixel shift as well. And uh, I really hope you enjoy this photo. So the light is going crazy down there right now. Those high level clouds are producing some beautiful colour. Hang on, I've just noticed something. I think I've got a scratch on my GoPro because it's just catching the light funny. Anyway, took a photo down there. I'll put it up and this way the light, we're now into the twilight and we're getting the belt of Venus colours. And it's very, very subdued, minimal type photo low contrast and I'm really enjoying it. We're going to wait a little bit longer for this one because we want that belt of Venus to come up a little bit higher above those mountains. So here we have the final photo of the day. Just one more panorama. I 
and it's as beautiful as that. Absolutely beautiful. Totally worth a hike up here. This is such an incredible spot. The views are amazing. Absolutely amazing. So that's it for today's video. We are going to make our way back down towards that hut right now while we've still got a little bit of light left. And yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed it. I'll put up what I think are the best photos for you to look at the end of this video. And if you've stuck with me this far, please think about like and subscribe, go over to my website, check out my prints, check out my merchandise. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye for now.